Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. You know what's awesome? Balloons. Lots and lots of balloons. Dozens upon dozens of balloons. And in this episode of Red Giant TV, director Seth Worley will show you how to get the party started by digitally filling a room with balloons. Also, if you suffer from globophobia, the crippling fear of balloons, this tutorial could be your first step in conquering it. Or, uh, you know, making it much, much worse. Take it away, Seth. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this tutorial uh, in which I will be taking this footage here, and uh, we're going to be multiplying uh, these balloons. We're actually technically not multiplying these balloons. We're bringing in an outside party balloon, um, but we're going to duplicate it all about the uh, frame. Um, these two plates here, you can see I wanted to have at least some practical balloons, both for reference and also just to mix practical and digital um, to help sell the effect. Um, and it kind of goes both ways. Just having a practical balloon next to a digital balloon and kind of mixed up in there, it helps sell the effect, but at the same time, you also do have really good reference in how to, you know, placement of the balloons and sizing the balloons. And it also helps us in our... Um, in our camera track in knowing where in the Z space to be putting the balloons and, uh, and then adjusting their size. So anyway, this footage cracks me up because when we were shooting, it really did just look like an elevator should open up and, you know, a balloon with a suitcase should, you know, float out, you know, in a top hat and, you know, wave hello to us and continue on. Like all these balloons are just mingling in the lobby, hanging out. Anyway. Uh, so let's give them some friends. We're going to take this uh, shot and create a new comp. So now we have uh, it in a comp. And while uh, CS6 has their camera tracker um, that works great, I'm still a big fan of the Foundry's camera tracker uh, and the controls it gives me and um, just the versatility. Whoa, did you guys see that? That was... No, that's not funny. I know. Uh, and then what we want to do is we're going to solve camera. Solved. So now, uh, a little thing we want to do. We're going to look for all these little tracks. Look for one track that is attached, uh, that we know is attached to a balloon. And I like this one right here. It's attached to this balloon string. So click it and it turns yellow. You can see it is... Where is it? Where'd you go? It's yellow now that I've clicked it. And I am going to then go down to this one menu and go to ground plane and set origin. Now we'll create our scene. And you can't really tell any difference because we don't have any 3D objects in. So we're going to go up here actually. Well, just so you can see, we're going to uh, let's create some text. Say hola because we are Spanish with British accents. Turn it up. Click 3D. Whoa! It's huge. So in fact, actually, let's go ahead and scale it back down. But it should now be in the frame. That's just beautiful. And we are done. Hola. Muy bien. Muy bien, mate. So now, uh, take hola. Delete hola. Whoop here, and I have... All of these uh, footage, all of these, all of these footage. I have all these footage here. All these shots of balloons on a green screen, and uh, this is the simplest of all the footage. Some of them were really funny of me having to run about pulling balloons everywhere. But let's take this. Let's go to balloon lobby one. We'll drop that down in there, and let's actually turn the opacity down to fifty-ish so we can see. Uh, what we're working with. Make it 3D, and wow, it's huge. One thing we want to do here, this null that it creates, um, camera tracker creates, we can actually scale that up, and it will make our balloon smaller. And uh, that is one of the many things I love about camera tracker. So, scale that down a bit, and uh, that's looking pretty good. So let's actually bring our opacity back up. And first thing we want to do is create a mask so we can mask out all of our unwanted materials, all of our undesirables from the plate. Brilliant. 
Seriously, no, you guys are doing great. Uh, now we'll go over here and do prime hat. Prime hat key, or to be precise. Drop that on. And this is a very, very, very complex stage of the process. Uh, you want to make sure your mouse is pointed straight at this auto, commute, auto compute button. And then if you can muster all the strength, okay, just click it. And it will get rid of your green. Pretty awesome. Uh, but just because we're control freaks, let's go to clean foreground and run that about the balloon. Look at all that detail. Clean background just to be safe in case something's there that we don't see. Oh, and it was. Look, that's beautiful. Seriously, that's the greatest key I've ever seen. So now, also just to be safe, spill killer. We're going to call him the spill killer. Click enable, and he's now killed all spilling. We can adjust that as if we like. You know, you want to get really refined. Thing. Uh, okay, so now our balloon is in the plate. So now, actually, we want to, before we do anything, I mean, anything else, uh, we're going to uh, add an expression to give the balloon just a little bit of wiggle, and, you know, as you know, that expression is very simple. We alt-click our timer here by position, type wiggle, and then parentheses, one, because we want it to be moving very slowly, comma, and five. That's five, you yeah. know, that's how far it will wiggle. So now it's very subtle wiggle applied to it. So now it's moving organically, just like the other balloons are, right? So that's nice. So now what I want to do then is just start duplicating it. Every time I duplicate it, I hit P, so then the position comes up, and I move it uh, on the Z axis, and then I'll grab it and move it on the X and Y axes. Uh, and I'll duplicate it again. I'll hit P, and I'll maybe move it even closer. Uh, duplicate it again, hit P, and really just continue this process for an ungodly amount of time. You know what? I forgot a step. I forgot to add Color Matcher, which I think makes a good difference. So let's grab Color Matcher. Let's bring it onto one of our balloons. It doesn't matter which. And target layer, your, our background plate. And then let's just turn up to 100, because that's how we roll. And then we're going to copy that. Select all of our balloons and hit paste. I got all of color matcher on them. And it probably doesn't make that huge of a difference, but it does to me. You know, and now that we brought our balloons even closer, I'm noticing this really gross uh, bordering around the balloons. Let's figure out what balloon that is. Just so we can work with the foreground one that we can see. There we go. Let's actually. Take it. And we're going to go in here and we're going to clean our background a little bit and click these little dark pixels around this balloon. What's cool here is we can actually select our primat here and copy it and then select all of our balloons and just hit paste and it will paste those parameters onto all of those balloons. All the settings that we have for primat, it will, instead of duplicating primat, it will just. Uh, paste those settings primate into the current version of primate. And we actually get a little bit of an opacity going on here because of what I did with the boring, but I don't mind it. It's cool, and it, it's a balloon. We can get away with it. So let's go back to our duplication process. So now it's been 17 years, and that was uh, intense. Um, my children have all aged, and there are a lot of balloons in this frame now. So since we really have you know nothing else going for us anymore because our life has gone on without us while we were duplicating balloons, let's create a new adjustment layer, and let's call that adjustment layer looks. And then we'll uh, drop magic bullet looks onto that adjustment layer living up to its name. And uh, once you do that, we'll click Edit, which will open up the Looks Builder. And uh, we'll go over here, and we're going to actually customize our own look rather than using a preset look. We'll start with these tools over on the right. We'll start with a vignette. I always like to drop a vignette on first. We'll adjust its size. Uh, we'll adjust our strength, our own personal physical strength, 
and then the vignette strength um because i'm hilarious uh well then adjust uh make sure this is focused on her face um it doesn't really matter obviously but you know every detail counts then we'll drop some diffusion on and i like to tone up the highlights only and tone down the size uh the idea here is to give it kind of janish kamensky Esque, which it's not the only guy who does this, obviously, but they give it, they give all the brights, uh, the uh, the bright lights in the frame a little bit of uh, diffusion. Um, that Spielbergian look. Uh, then we're gonna uh, go in and get a get Colorista three way. Drop that on, and we're gonna bring the shadows down into kind of a bluish uh, tone, even almost on the purple side. Let's do because that'll give it kind of a an Instagrammy, vintagey look. Um, and then we'll move our highlights up into the more golden area um, of the color wheel. And uh, that's going to, like I said, give it that vintage -y Instagram-y. I'm going to keep saying Instagram-y, and you're all going to keep thinking I'm a hack. But um, anyway, print bleach bypass. We'll then drop on and turn the exposure compensation down a little bit. And that right there, I think, is a really cool look. Um, and just for superstitious reasons at the end, so you can see the comparison, I like to drop uh, an auto shoulder on just in case there's any like super bright, like what, you know, why it's bright, it's like, you know, blowing out the image anywhere. I just like to drop it on for superstitious reasons. But there you go. Good job. You've successfully cloned a whole bunch of balloons. Dude, that was totally awesome. Oh, come on. Like, if you had a room full of balloons, you wouldn't do the same thing? Yeah, I thought so. <coughs> mm. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site at SethWorley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at RedGiantSoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on RedGiantPeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy, two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at RedGiantSoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.